don't be an AI engineer if you're like this. You've heard this hundreds of times, AI is transforming the world, but this rapidly growing field isn't for everyone. So let's talk honestly about whether AI engineering specifically is right for you. Now, here are the real stakes. You'll work for decades, so if you don't enjoy what you do, someone who does is going to outwork you, get the promotions, and land better opportunities. It sounds corny, but you need to make sure AI engineering is right for you and it's not just hype. So here is group number one, the pure math lover. If you love math and neural networks more than anything else, AI engineering might disappoint you and here's why. School teaches the theory behind models like ChatGPT and Transformers, and AI engineering on the other hand requires building practical systems. It's software first. You'll work with APIs, write tests, and build on existing applications, and you won't be training any models from scratch. So if you live for the math, if you really despise software engineering, then AI research through a master's or PhD program may be better for you. Now, group number two is the application only builder. If you've never seen a transformer architecture diagram, and if you don't care how ChatGPT really works down at the level of transformers, then AI engineering probably isn't your path either. Now, this is the opposite extreme, right? And it's equally problematic. And here's why. There's three main reasons. First is interview reality. You're going to face technical questions about model architectures and foundational concepts, even for engineering roles. Team dynamics. Senior engineers, principal engineers, they will be discussing papers and mathematical concepts, and you can't seem like an imposter. And lastly, career longevity. You've all heard before that AI moves fast, and those who understand the math and actually read papers are going to outpace those who don't. So you can think of it like a spectrum, and you want to be somewhere in the middle of the spectrum to really succeed in AI engineering. Now, here's the sweet spot. You've got to find your balance. The best AI engineers fall in the middle. They appreciate the math and the theory, but they're driven by building real systems that solve actual problems. You really need both the foundation and the pragmatism to thrive long term as an AI engineer. And here's a real story. And this is a surprise that I had back when I was working at Amazon. So my expectation was a software engineering project building AI systems. But due to demands on my team, I ended up getting more of a data science project with real world messiness and constraints. That's something else you've got to keep in mind, especially in big tech companies. The specific role titles can be quite fluid and the project you get might not even match the role title that you have. So I expected to dive into neural networks and advanced models, and boy was I wrong. Instead, I discovered what engineering really looks like in production. And here's three quick but hard lessons from the field. First, real data is incredibly noisy. Nothing prepares you for production data quality. It's nothing like the Kaggle data sets you're probably working with. Denoising becomes critical. If you skip denoising, your results are destroyed, and the theory ends up meeting the very messy reality. Second, data prep, even if you're not a data engineer, ends up being 90% of the work. You won't be building any models from scratch. Instead, you'll spend a significant amount of time wrangling data from multiple sources and regions into a structured format that existing models can consume. And finally, perfect results don't exist. Let go of all attachment to the perfect model or perfect results. Predicting AWS device health, the routers across the AWS network, which is what I was working on, involves countless variables. You can't account for everything. So learning to work with uncertainty and imperfect results is absolutely essential. So what actually matters then? If you're not supposed to be a complete math buff, but you're not supposed to be a software engineering buff either. Well, what actually matters is building real world projects. I know it sounds corny, but it's actually really important. This matters way more than memorizing theory or grinding 500 plus leak code problems. And this experience really solidified what I teach my students. If you want to land an offer at a big tech company, if you want to succeed in a role at a big tech company, practical skills are going to be theoretical knowledge every time. And GPA obsession, really the theory that you learn in school, is not going to prepare you for production systems. So should you pursue AI engineering? Well, you're a good fit if you enjoy both math and building systems. You're comfortable with messy real world problems. You can balance math foundations with practical engineering. And you actually like the idea of continuously learning over the course of your career. But on the other hand, you should probably reconsider consider if you only love pure math and theory, or if you completely avoid mathematical concepts. And if you want perfect, clean problems with clear solutions, AI engineering is certainly not for you. And if you have zero interest in software engineering, if you can't even stand it at all, then you should not pursue AI ML engineering as a significant chunk of the work as a machine learning engineer has to do with software engineering. So here's the bottom line. Just be honest with yourself. And this is the most important part of the video. Be honest with yourself. Assess your genuine interests 
not just the hype around AI over the next five to 10 years and find some kind of balance because it's going to require both technical depth and practical skills. And just stay curious. The love of learning is going to matter a lot more than perfection here. Now, if this video has not changed your mind and you still want to become an AI or machine learning engineer, click the link in the description. You can book a free 15 minute strategy call with me. I'll give you a roadmap and a game plan for you to land an offer within the next few months. Again, that's a free 15 minute strategy call. Click the link in the description and I look forward to talking to you soon.